Chair. You are now live. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, committee. Welcome to the next Grants Advisory Committee, 31st of July, 2020. Um, again, virtual meeting. Uh, we are being streamed, um, so everyone can hear what we're saying. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to move on now. Oh, by the way, if there's any technical issues, I will suspend the meeting while the officers sort that out, and then we'll come back again afterwards. All right, but thank you very much. OK, uh, agenda item number one, apologies for absence. Aaron? Uh, hi, Chair, I haven't received uh, any apologies for absence for this meeting. Thank you very much. Um, uh, to officers, could I, the officers just uh, cut in and tell, tell everybody who's, who's present, please? My name is John London. I am the uh, North Stoke Community Development Officer and I have been um, liaising with the applicants on this, uh, on, on, the, on this matter. Thank you very much. Uh, Claire. Hello, I'm Claire Gibbons. I'm also Healthy New Town Programme Lead and I'm substituting for Jay Clark on this occasion. Terrific. Chair, Chair, I can barely hear Claire. She's very, very She was uh, a bit right, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, Aaron. Uh, good morning, Chair. Um, name's Aaron. I'm uh, Democratic Services Officer clerking the meeting today. Thank you very much indeed. Okie dokie, um, and we've got another gentleman, uh, Jonathan, he's controlling the meeting, but you probably won't hear him, so that's okay, thank you. Um, agenda item number three, uh, sorry, two, sorry, uh, declarations of interest from members. None. 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 Thank you very much. Um, item number three, minutes of the previous meeting. So if we could just go through that, uh, members, as we do normally, and I'll just go through by page and you just uh, sing out if you have any alterations, please. So that's page one. And page two. And I think that's it. Everything OK with everybody? May I sign those off as a, a, a correct record? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, moving on then to the, the main event, so to speak, uh, number four, uh, item number four, community test funding applications. John, if you'd be kind enough to lead, this, lead us through this, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, so the uh, first uh, applications uh, that we have are the deferrals from previous uh, from, from previous committee meetings. And the first one is from Over Sports Football Club for verti draining of the pitch. Uh, the, the, the club has been going for over 100 years, has over 30 members, and uh, they basically need to get the pitch uh, drained uh, with a process that alleviates water logging. When this came to the council, uh, sorry, to the um, to the committee last time, the questions were over who owns the land and uh, if the parish council owns the land, uh, why are they not paying for this process? Uh, we've done a bit of digging, and it turns out that 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 is a simplified picture of the relationship. The land is owned by the parish council. Uh, however, it's on a long term lease to a charity called the Over Community Centre Association, which is a charity. Uh, and the Over Community Centre Association would be uh, a, a suitable body to apply for this funding. Uh, however, they also work with the uh, with the local sports club for the pitches. So uh, they decided in concert that the sports club should, should apply for things for, for, for the sports pitches. Uh, Over Sports Club note that uh, it's only because of local people making donations that the club is able to keep going and that they have repeatedly asked the parish council for funding and that those requests have not been successful. I took the uh, liberty of just checking with NALC and um, I can confirm that there's 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 no issues here. Parish councils have discretionary power to provide and contribute a wide range of recreational facilities in and outside of the council's area and the fact that uh, it's owned by the council would not preclude them from granting, uh, for example, uh, section 137 funding. Thank you, John. Members, should I, should I go around my screen? Should I do um Ladies first. Which one of you ladies? <laughs> um, well, 
I'm very sympathetic to this, actually, and it's been to us before. I, I can't understand where the parish council is coming from, um, but I'm very sympathetic to a, an amateur club which has been going for a long time, which wants to drain the pitch. It's not a large sum of money, um, but I don't know where we stand with the fact that the land is owned by the parish council. So, I have to unmute Sue. No, you're still muted, Sue. Oh, that's better. Um, surely, if the if it would appear that although the land is owned by the parish council, that this sports uh, community charity has all the dealings with this piece of land, and therefore the parish council do not feel it in a way that it's their land. Um, I believe they only charge a real popcorn rent, if anything. And £300 for this sort of drainage is very, very cheap compared to what we've done here in Swayze, I know. And I, I would think that we should go along with it and um, agree this sum. Claire? Um, I, I tend to agree. I have the same kind of reservations, but equally it is a, a, a small sum of money. Um, it feels a little frustrating in some ways, but um, but it's obviously a good, a, you know, a good facility and a good club to have in the village um, that's used and has had long standing there. So I've got mixed feelings, but generally I feel because of this sort of slightly different relationship with the long term lease, I'm slightly more positive, but, but with some reservations. Peter. Okay. Peter. Um, yes, Chair. I don't really have an issue. Um, uh, yes, but uh, strictly speaking, as with uh, parish council ownership, it, it should fall to them. But it seems to be a local community um, uh, initiative with the football club, so I don't have an issue. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Well, I think I'm probably in the same same thought process as, as the rest of the committee. Um, it's irritating to be perfectly blunt. Um, we do have a policy. We're going to have to strengthen that policy it is generally speaking that it would be the parish would fork out half of this or we'd expect them to fork out half which in this case would have been 150 quid so i am irritated by this but i absolutely concur with the rest of the committee um so shall we say with reluctance without the input of the parish council that we will grant the 300 pounds on this occasion yes I'd, I'd quite i don't know about you guys but i quite like that mentioned actually we do have a set of rules over has money it's not it's not a tiny tiny parish and for 150 quid it could fork out and support its community as we are doing for the whole of south Ham. right i'll leave you to reword that john thanks thank you uh Moving on then to the next one, which is the Global Learning Ideas Exchange. Uh, this also came up at the last meeting uh, and they are asking for um, uh, 637 pounds and, and 68 pence for hook cards and accompanying design time educational resource. Uh, at the last meeting, the committee e expressed um, some 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 probably well-founded confusion as to exactly what it is that the global learning exchange global learning ideas exchange is and what it hopes to do i have asked them for a uh, a brief pre of what they are and how they aim to organize um i i will be paraphrasing what they have given me as we do not have time to go through it uh, but they are striving to play its part to make the world a more equitable, sustainable and cohesive and to foster critical thinkers. There are several more points under that which I can go into if you would like me to. They have several goals. The global goals are 17 goals under which around 170 global targets have been set by the UN in order to make the world more sustainable and fair. Uh, around 200 nations 
uh, including the United Kingdom and leaders have signed up to meet these targets by 2030. I have a list of these goals if you would like me to go through them. Who are the GLIE? Uh, it is set up by uh, the applicant, uh, Antonio, I'm sorry, I do not have his surname. Uh, he is a teacher and a school leader of 15 years, and he has assembled a not yet made official committee. They are made up of a landowner and sustainability champion named Edward Darling, a sustainable fashion designer and expert, Natalia Pipska, three local head teachers who are unnamed and uh, uh, and himself. The reason why they have decided to start with hook cards is that learners need to establish connections between their experiences and global issues in order to engage and develop their sense of a global outlook and the, the easiest and most effective way to facilitate the sharing and appreciation of opinions is through uh, conversation and debate which these cards will spark. Again, I have very heavily paraphrased, so if you would like to go into further detail on any of those matters, please ask. Can I? So, crack on. Why should South Cams be funding something that is global? And what, how do we under our guidance, really, determine that these hook cards are for South Cam's people, and where where is our ownership of this particular enterprise? I'm um, I'm not really feeling that it should have come to this committee. Fair enough. Thanks, uh, Claire D. Yeah. Um I, I, I agree with Sue. It's not clear from certainly the information that's been shared. It doesn't mean it's not somewhere within. <laughs> and it sounds like they provide a lot of information. We certainly haven't heard how how it relates to South Cam's residents and young people, and also actually how the hook cards will be used. Um, I'm still not clear on what the how they're delivering them, if you see what I mean. I, I, I haven't just haven't got enough a feel for it at the moment to feel that I could support it based on what we know. Thank you. Claire? You um, I, yeah, I just um, feel sort of slightly uneasy about this. I have a, um, a, a question, an information question for John. Um, when were they established as a charity and do we have their charity status number? Um, they have not established as a charity. Uh, they were established at the beginning of this year. Um, they have, uh, I, I have been informed that they have recently received a bank account. Um, uh, so so I, I, I must assume that they are a constituted group. However, that has not been made clear. Peter? Um, thanks, Chair. I think um, it's just a question of um, a little bit of clarification. I think Councillor Ellington's questions are good questions and perhaps if John doesn't mind going back and just clarifying a couple of those things and um, perhaps we can sign it off after that. But yeah, I, th I don't think we quite have enough information at the moment. Uh, Chair, sorry, it's just just um, uh, to to ensure I'm asking exactly the right questions. Uh, would would Councillor Ellington like to um, just just repeat specifically the the, the questions, please? She'll try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, where what evidence do we have that this is a South Cam's related project? that it will affect South Cam's residents and that it is based in South Cam's. In other words, why why would South Cam support it, really? Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay, uh, I, I have a couple, John. Um, yes. It says here that they, they've declared they're a charity when it turns out they possibly aren't, because um, if you're a charity, you would have a charity number, I understand. Mm. So that would be um, a point of 
discussion. Um, they're a constituted group, apparently, but we have had, if I, I read you right, no confirmation of that, no minutes, no names of officers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And with a charity, you would need officers to be in set bits and pieces. Um, what we had a members feel? Do we want to defer this for this information, or? I certainly would because you know just looking at our guidance it's very clear that if they don't have a written constitution then that wouldn't be something we should consider and okay. I just I just it may be that it comes back with more information next time and we're all perfectly happy with it but at the moment I wouldn't be happy with it. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with that too. Yes, uh, me too. Claire, Sue, Peter you're at the same? Yes that's yeah. fine. Okay John can we defer this then please? Um, Thank you very much we'll do so. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, next up is uh, Bottisham Swimming Club. And hold on, I just need to get back to my notes. Uh, Bottisham Swimming Club is leading this grant proposal for uh, some swimming lane ropes uh, at Impington Village College and Bottisham Village College. Um, it, effectively, the Bottisham Swimming Club, the Cambridge Triathlon Club and the Impington Masters are three uh, organisations involved in swimming, both inside and outside of South Cam's district area. They are um, jointly working to replace their ropes and Bottisham Swimming Club is leading on the proposal for Impington Village College and Bottisham Village College. The schools have not been approached for funding of the ropes, which was a question from the council last time. Um, uh, the current arrangement is that the schools store the lane ropes at no cost to the club, whilst the club look after the ropes themselves, including repairs and replacement. The, the ropes uh, at Impington Village College are currently owned by Cambridge Triathlon Club and used by all three clubs. The current uh, Bottisham Village College Lane Ropes are owned by Bottisham Swimming Club and used by Bottisham Swimming Club and the Cambridge Triathlon Club. And as a note, I have that the Impington Masters don't swim at Bottisham. They're basically trying to uh, raise funds to replace all of the ropes across these areas that need replacing all at once. Uh, and whilst they are aware that some of these swimming areas are outside of South Cams, they are happy to ring fence funds such that it would only go towards uh, pools within the South Cams area. However, they do note that residents in South Cams swim across all of these sites. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I apologise. I That was the, the additional information. I forgot to give the specific information, which is that the uh, the total project is £5,500 and they are requesting £1,000. The obvious question then is, have they got the rest of the four and a half grand they need? I have not. Uh, I, I, I will check within the more detailed notes that I have. Please give me a moment. Thanks. Uh, members, any other questions? Unless I've taken that one from someone, apologies. Yes, please. Claire, Del Claire Delver. I think we had a specific question about whether the ropes are actually used by the school swimmers themselves as well. I think that was our specific question. From what John said, it sounds like they're not because it says they're stored at their cost. It should suggest that they are. Yeah. Is that a correct understanding from 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 to others? Um, correct understanding. Uh, I, I, from the information given, it sounds as if the school may use them, but the school would be an occasional user. They would not be a, a primary user of the ropes. Uh, so the, 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 the three clubs that were mentioned were mentioned as primary users of the ropes and uh, the school name was noticeable in, 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 uh, in absence in that list, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Um, and it, uh, can I just add in there that in terms of South Cam's users, of course, this um, swimming pool is very local to the Wilbrahams, so it's very local to my ward, and I know that residents of South Cam's do use that pool. Yeah. 
Right then, are we? Um, I, I'll tell you what. There is some really strange things happening with these uh, this video feed. You're all going around in circles on me, on me at the moment. There's I'm not on. I've been blocked completely, right? And uh, Claire was just a small picture just now. Now you're big, now you're all big. Everyone taking a turn at, at the big picture. Yeah. That's it. So, right. I, I suspect this this may end in tears if it's the way it's going at the moment. So. Um, what do we feel about the Bottisher one, uh, gang? Do we think that's OK? Um, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any problems with it myself. No, I mean, I think that the fact, Chair, that they've, uh, we assume they'll raise, uh, you know, the 4,500. Yeah. Um, and that being that, that being the case, and uh, with the health and well-being and for children, it sounds worthwhile. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I can see lots of nodding. OK, should yeah. we take that as a affirmative then, John, please? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm very sorry you cut out there, Chair. Uh, could we just take that as an affirmative approval, please? Uh, so noted. Right, and before you go to the next one, John, I'm just, I, do, I must apologise. The first item on the new applications, Melbourne Amateur Dramatics uh, Society. I missed that completely. You must have had me morning eyes on. Um, I'm part of the crew for that, so I must declare that. Um, and interest. Would you like me to chair that item, Chair? If you wouldn't mind, please, Claire. Thank you. Apologies for that. Uh, sorry, and Claire, just, just oh, sorry. to clarify that. No apologies. Uh, you said you were a member of the crew, did you? Yeah, I'm. I'm I crew for it. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Stage stage hand. Um, are, are we going to do the Willingham Bowls Club? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, although the the point is mute, uh, uh, moot. I, I was asked uh, what the other funding was, and I can confirm uh, there is a list with uh, which I can go into if required with um, things such as bags of help, Tesco scheme, and other places that they have received funding from. Lovely, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Willingham Bowls Club. Uh, a, a uh, request for £1,000 towards £2,000 capital expense to purchase a used refurbished lawnmower. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, 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 Chair. No, just OK. Thank oh. you. Um, uh, our Willingham Bowls Club started in 1935, 25 members, adults pay a subscription, villages that benefit are Willingham, Over and Swavesy. Uh, and the, uh, they are hoping uh, that uh, effectively they need, they need the lawnmower to cut the ground and on that ground they have run multiple uh, events in support of the local community such as events with the local primary school for children and Willingham surgery for um, uh, patients suffering from a range of medical issues. The question uh, previously was, is the land owned by the parish council uh, from, from the last meeting? Um, and I, uh, when I contacted the contact for the Willingham Bowls Club, I received the unfortunate news that he had just uh, come out of a serious operation in hospital. Uh, he was going to hopefully get information to me in time for this meeting. Unfortunately, uh, he has not been able to come back with an answer uh, in that time. I took the liberty of checking on the Willingham Parish Council website and in the notes of my predecessor, and I can confirm that the uh, Parish Council website indicates the land is owned by the Parish Council uh, and that uh, Willingham Parish Council have given the Bowls Club the land for a Bowls Green free of charge since 1937. Unfortunately, I have no further information on this matter. Thank you, John. Members? Um, Who's first? Claire? Yeah, so um, remind me um, if I'm getting this wrong, um, wasn't the issue that we didn't want, we wanted to um, make sure that whatever lawnmower was acquired uh, was energy efficient and fitted with our zero carbon targets. So um, we wondered why they wanted to purchase a used refurbished lawnmower whether it was diesel driven or oil driven or whatever. Um, and I'm not sure whether those questions have been answered. Am I remembering correctly, members of the committee? Um, 
Chair, if, if I can comment, uh, yeah. Claire is right, yes, yes and no. Yeah. What, what we said was that uh, we couldn't retrospectively introduce um, those guidelines or rules. Um, so for the next, uh, my understanding was the next funding round, we would publish those guidelines. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and therefore this would qualify. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I seem to remember that somebody was saying that it is extremely difficult to find a suitable lawnmower for cutting bowls greens that is energy efficient. They they just don't make them um, at the moment. So we may have a problem if we do change the rules. I think um, we, we've agreed lawnmowers in the past for a number of other places yeah. and that we need to be consistent. I'm, I'm not against uh, uh, agreeing this. I just wanted to be uh, reminded of what we agreed last time. So thank you to Peter. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not against this at all. Okay, uh, Claire Delvin. You're on mute, Claire, sorry. Apologies. If my memory serves me correctly, and it may not, um, I thought our concerns with this were around the um, who owns the land, as John talked about, but that's why we deferred it. And it's confirmed that it is land owned by the parish council. So I guess we just need to be consistent in the way that we deal with this compared with how we've dealt with previous applications for lawnmowers for land yeah. owned by a parish council. Yeah, but they've also said that they've given the land, albeit not on the land registry as being given to the Bowles Club, but they have given the land, so they don't pay a lease. So, yeah, I think said that it's my, one yeah. after the other. I, th I think the land, if I understand it correctly, the land has been gifted and therefore yeah. it, it's How do we feel, guys? Go for it. That's a soothing, yes? Yep. Claire? I mean, they, they are contributing, Chair, a thousand. Um, they're asking for half. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't really have a problem with it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I think if they were asking for the full amount, I would be less comfortable. OK, I'll take that as affirmation then. Um, John, that's a go for that one, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, we will now be moving on to the Melbourne Amateur Dramatic Society. I'll, I'll hand over to Claire on this one then, if I may. And I'll hand back to John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, so uh, this is the Melbourne Amateur Dramatic Society and they are applying for funding for the MADS Spooky Spectacular. Uh, they have 28 members. They started in 2012. Uh, this is a specific uh, application to purchase additional lighting equipment for the annual Spooky Spectacular event, which is held at Halloween. The improved lighting will enable them, uh, enable more vulnerable people in the community to join in the fun. Uh, they say, and I quote, sadly last year our friends from Scope could not attend as a result of difficult conditions and poor lighting, which made their wheelchair access too dangerous. Improved lighting will open up this event to all who wish to join in, including the elderly and those with limited mobility, end quote. Uh, approximately 150 people attend this event or, or, or have in pre-COVID times from the villages around, around such as Melbourne, Meldrith, Shepreth, Falmere, uh, Thriplow. Um, as as to, to sort of head off at the pass, uh, uh, the, the obvious question, there is no reference made to COVID within the application. Uh, it is a capital uh, a purchase for four application for four hundred pounds. The total project cost is four hundred and four pounds and eighty five pence. Um, any questions um, from from any of the councillors? I want to know where the four where the four pounds eighty five is coming from. <laughs> I think possibly from the chairman's pocket. <laughs> That's it. Claire, um, what is going to be the effect of COVID on this? Would, Chair, would you would you permit me to um, answer perhaps some of the questions? Yeah, you, you can certainly contribute as a as a member of the public on this one. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, as I as I understand it, um, uh, with the regulations as they are at the moment with uh, COVID regulation, 
Um, the plans are that whereas uh, it used to go around in uh, groups of six and they could be mixed, obviously, for whoever, right? This one will now be in family units. It's, you know, they'll be locked down, essentially, and the distances, obviously, were way over two metres anyway. They would, they would normally wrap a five, or five to ten minute gap between each party. So as far as the code is regular, there is nothing to touch, so to speak. It is literally uh, the living daylights frightened out of you as you go through somewhere dark. Um, so other than the grass that you may fall over on. Uh, can I just confirm that this is an all an outside event? All of it Absolutely. Out? Every, every piece of it is outside. Okay. Um, Peter, any questions? Uh, no, no, I'm I'm fine with it. I'm I'm conscious that um, apparently tomorrow is the day for the pantomime um, season to be decided one way or the other. But it's an outdoor event, so I think it's fine. Yeah, um, and in fact, uh, just to, to add on that, it sounds like there are going to be so many things not happening that yeah. it would be nice to be able to support something that will be able to happen and, and that people will be able to enjoy, even in COVID situation. Um, mm -hmm. as a kind of community event, um, if correct procedures sound like they're being put in place for it, would be, would be my view. Just a question, please, John. It says, and I'm sure Joseph will know the answer to this. It says here, landowner is parish council. Where, where does this actually take place? It, it takes place on the, the new, or off the new wreck in the piece of land which is called Millennium Woods. It's about. Uh, yeah, I really know where it is. So. Yeah, you know, right. behind the pavilion, so to speak. Behind the pavilion. Um, I'm sorry if I missed this earlier, but um, has the parish council contributed? Not, uh, to, not to my knowledge. Uh, there, there, there is no reference to the parish council having uh, contributed. Okay, I think, you know, to be consistent with our previous, um, previous views, do the rest of the councillors agree that um, we should encourage the group to apply for half the funding from the parish council? Yes. Yes, that's fine. Yes. Is that okay, John? Uh, uh, yes, Chair. Do, is that a is that a um, ha, ha, is that is that a, a, a yes with an encouragement or is that a, uh, a a deferral with encouragement or a no with encouragement? Are we are we? I mean, just to get the other people's views. Would we be comfortable with funding two hundred pounds of this application, for example? I would be happier to fund all all four hundred personally because I think it's probably not a um, it it. It may be the land that is owned by parish council, but it's not as if it's the village hall. It is merely land that has been donated to the community for a community orchard, as far as I can understand. So it's it's, it's general land, and this this lighting is not going to be owned by the parish council it, or or attached to any parish council building or anything it That's is right. going to be part of the amateur dramatic society's resources for other events good point so i'm not really worried about parish council i would go for the 400. thank you um just to clarify i mean it, I, it sounds correct that the equipment would be owned by the um amateur dramatic society and I presume it could be used for future events and kept for future things as well. Is that your understanding, Councillor Hales? Indeed it is. Yeah, OK, thank you. I think um, I'm much more comfortable on that basis. Um, uh, and Peter and Sue, all comfortable that we grant the full yes. amount then? Yeah, yeah lovely. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much, Chair. Over to you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Claire. Um, OK, then, uh, John. OK, uh, next we have Over and District Branch Royal uh, British Legion uh, with a grant of a uh, request of a thousand pounds towards a total project cost of uh, 3.75k for three uh, for three co uh, commemorative. My pardons for three commemorative benches 
uh, which will be installed in um, Sorry, my, my computer went a bit wonky there. Over Long Stanton and Willingham. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, over Long Stanton and Willingham. Um, uh, so uh, <laughs> um, the Overland District uh, branch of the Royal British Legion started in 1922. It has 65 members. They've asked for the three um, uh, for the three benches. In anticipation of your questions and to try to avoid um, further deferrals, uh, we have asked for uh, a list of locations or at least a, a process by which these locations may be determined uh, and whether or not uh, uh, the relevant parish councils have been approached for support uh, and this information has not been forthcoming. Mm. OK, Presum presumably chair, they're still deciding on location. I think, by the way, it's good that it is both V and VJ yeah. Memorial benches. So I think they're to be congratulated that they're doing this. Mm. The, the ones that um, the Grants Committee helped to fund in Swavesey um, are absolutely beautiful and it has created a really nice memorial garden that is using land which previously had been a dump. Um, uh, as you know, that sort of thing. And I would support the idea of the money going to the benches, but I do think some of the questions that John has raised in relation to position and so on, we really ought to have some idea about those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, could I ask a question about the, the amount, the 3,750? Um, you mentioned on the documentation, no quote. So where did, the, where did they get this figure from? Uh, I have uh, requested a, a, a quote. Uh, uh, I have the information that each bench costs 1,250, which includes delivery, uh, but we don't have a quote to back that figure up. That's okay. just uh, in the form. Okay, thank you. That, that's what it cost in Swavesea. I'm fairly oh. sure that was the figure. Fine, thanks. Um, well, we did say that we were going to support um, celebrations of the E Day, and obviously we couldn't yeah. do that. And then we said we'd support celebrations of VJ Day. So, um, giving a grant for these benches i think fits with what we've already decided i agree mm -hmm. uh, see uh claire nodding peter are you are uh, going to give a nod yes. yes that's fine that's that's an affirmative across the board then john thank you very much chair uh next up we have uh revitalize respite holidays uh, they are a charity set up in 1963. Uh, they are uh, they refer to themselves as a users rather than a members organization. Uh, they have three centres in Southport, Southampton and Chigwell. They are registered with the Care Quality Commission and their centres have specialised equipment, including bed hoists, etc., for the use of uh, people with additional needs. They are requesting part funding towards two essential respite breaks for disabled people and their carers, those people uh, uh, from within South Cambridgeshire. Um, the, the, the amount per each specific um, holiday that they are requesting is £382 per, per holiday. And the total amount of, that they are requesting is uh, 764. The total project cost is £3,848. Thank you. I don't know that we've ever ever supported a holiday before. We generally support um, things, uh, hardware of one or another, but we don't normally support holidays and that's what I understand this to be. Yeah. And I'm just looking at our 
um, mm -hmm. our title notes actually, because obviously it sounds like a very worthy thing to support, but I'm just not sure it fits within the guidance for the community chair. Well, that's what I was thinking, Claire. Well, while, while you're looking at that, Claire, John, it's got here startup costs. So that, that indicates it's in a different category. Uh, that is uh, uh, the self-identified uh, project type that they put in. Right. I believe that. Um, uh, no, wait, I, I, I should not. I should not say that. Um, that that is what they have self-identified this project as. OK, chair, chair, under startup costs. Um, it and going back to uh, Councillor Ellington's point, it, it's startup costs may include training of staff volunteers for all hire and other revenue costs. Um, like Councillor Ellington, I'm not sure if we can support the holidays themselves, but perhaps we can support uh, money going towards those things, training, hall hire or other initial revenue costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could we um, support equipment that they might need when they're on holiday? So they, you know, in order to take a holiday, is it required? Uh, does the organisation or the individuals have to purchase special equipment? I don't know. It depends on the level of disability. Perhaps that's just something that we could ask John to go back to the applicant and ask if there are any costs that we could potentially support. So just looking again at our guidance, which is something we need to be, be careful of, it, it says yeah. what cannot be funded and it's items that would benefit individuals and not a group. So even if it was equipment, it would need to be equipment that would be yeah. usable by yeah. other people. Should we should we ask should we ask John to go back to the applicant and say is there any equipment that would be uh, able for us to fund for this process um, rather than um, people or persons or, or training or something or training yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, also actually whether there are and I don't know the answer to this uh, I don't know whether Peter does but whether there are any county council grants that are available for this type of Thing. I don't know, but whether they've explored other other grant options. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so uh, not sure that we're supportive of the principle. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I feel that, that we should try and support them in some way. Um, I will check as a separate action um, and advise them or advise John on the County Council provision. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I'll certainly check that. Okay. Thank you, Chair. So just to confirm, this specific grant application is a no. However, we are encouraging them to work with us to apply for something that we would be able to fund. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Stro stroke, no stroke defer. I think. Fantastic. Th uh, no stroke. You don't have a box for no stroke defer. Thank you very much, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the next one up is the Fendland Squash, Squash Club, which is applying for a thousand pounds out of a project cost of 4.8k for uh, the uh, works to replace the current ineffective court heating system uh, at the uh, at their their club. The club has been going since 1975, has approximately 40 full time members and quite a few pay as you go users. Um, we uh, in in anticipation of your questions, we've clarified several points with the club. The building is owned by Swavesey Village College as a landowner. However, it is then leased to the club on a peppercorn amount and the club has exclusive rights to use the building. The club has paid for the building and the extension and are responsible for the costs of operation, upkeep, refurbishment and enhancement. The school does occasionally use the facilities. However, when the school uses the facilities, they pay full market rate as would any other third party user of the facility. They are hoping that by replacing the ineffective old court heating system, it will help with play in the winter months and also help the group to be more inclusive uh, by allowing elderly and junior players to access the, the facilities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'm. I'm not a um, member or, or have anything to do with Swayze Village College, so I don't think I have any interest here. But I would say that I did find out that 
one of the things about squash, those of you who play squash know these things, but I don't, is if you don't get the ball warm, you can't play with it. So if they haven't got a heating system it does, that works, it does reduce the amount of play that they can do in the winter time. They did build the building. It's the ground that the building sits on that belongs to the village college. Um, and as you say, they pay a peppercorn rent. And I think in the past we have we have given them a grant towards setting up um, some training uh, for people who were going to train younger people um, in, in squash to encourage the sustainability of the club as a whole. I'll shut up now. Uh, Claire Delafield? Um, yes, I mean, it, it generally looks like a like a good application. My uh, question with kind of our um, zero carbon type uh, view is, is the, is the building insulated? Because I would have some reservations about funding a new um, heating system without knowing that the property has reasonable in, um, insulation measures. I don't know how other people feel about that. Um, could I comment, Chair? I mean, I think Claire is, is right. I suspect the answer would be it probably cost them a million pounds to um, re, yeah. re insulate it, which is better. Um, but, but yes, I think there's nothing wrong with, with asking uh, because of what we're trying to do on zero carbon. Look, what, what kind of heating system are you putting in? In places, uh, other, um, other parishes or other communities have put energy uh, efficient systems in. So I think we should ask that question anyway. Yeah, I, I, I agreed. And, and I was also going to say, you know, that this is sort of borderline in a way for us. It could be a zero carbon um, application. Um, and, and in fact, actually on that, they could possibly um, get some advice um, because part of the zero carbon grant is that they can get energy advice for buildings. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I would want to make sure that um, if we agreed this, that they were actually going to take advice on the most efficient, energy efficient system and, and not just, and, and they've given a, a figure here of 4,812, so they've obviously done quite a lot to work on it, but do we know what kind of heating they're putting in? So what, what, are, you, what are you guys saying? Are you suggesting that we, we approve it with those comments or? Would you like to defer it with those comments? Uh, I would suggest to approve it subject to them, as Claire suggested, taking advice on the zero and the energy efficiency. Yeah, I would support that. Yeah. Councillor Delafield? Yeah, OK. OK, we'll go with that one then, John, please. Uh, so that is a, uh, a, a is yes. Support? It's a support with uh, Councillor Daunton's comments with regards to taking advice from the uh, uh, zero yeah. carbon grants team on um, insulation and other kind of um, <coughs> eco. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, next up, we have a uh, an application from uh, St John's Church uh, uh, in Little Wilbraham uh, to fund vital works on the southwest nave window in Little Wilbraham Church. They are asking for the maximum 100, uh, sorry, a thousand pounds out of 126,420 uh, pounds. Uh, this is uh, due to water ingress uh, damaging the stonework near the window. Uh, they note that the church is the only public building in the village and is open daily between nine and five and is used for parish council meetings, concerts, fates, coffee mornings, as well as the local polling station for local and national elections. They have not received any help from the parish council with funding. However, the parish council supports the application. They have are. Uh, already secured uh, over £87,000 worth of funding. They have £27,500 worth of funding and I have a list of where the funding that they have requested has come from uh, if you require it. Thank you, Chair. Um, Thank you. Chair, could I speak first on this, please? Um, please 
Yep, this is in my ward, it's in my village. If I look out of the window here across the field, I can actually see the church. Um, I didn't know that they were bringing it to this. They were um, making the application at the moment, but I did know that they were going to make an application. Um, I can confirm that it's the only public building in the village. It is used a lot uh, for the community. Um, and I can confirm that the window is in need of repair and that they have worked hard um, to seek funding from elsewhere. Thank you, Councillor Thornton. Um, other members? I mean, it, it's it's clearly impressive, um, the 126,000. Um, and uh, as uh, uh, I mean, Claire has the local knowledge as long as it, it really is being used as a community building and, and space rather than per se for the church. Um, and then I think it meets the criteria, but but uh, you know I'm happy yeah. to be advised otherwise. Claire Delderfield. Yeah, I agree with all that Peter said. It looks like it's you know as it is the only community space in the village and is used by parish council and other groups. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with it. I would like to say that uh, 126,000 pounds for a window. Um, I look forward to seeing the window because that's quite some window. <laughs> Sorry, if it can just come in there briefly. Um, I don't know if they've sent you photographs, John, but it, but it is a very large um, a medieval window which was repaired in the 19th century and the glass is 19th century um, and the glass has been damaged and um, the area, the stonework around the, um, the frame of the window as well. So it, it's a big, very specialist job. Yeah. It's got a lot of historical value as well then. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so did, did you have anything to say, Sue? I'm very happy with the whole idea. I know how much these things cost, having been a church warden and things before. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'll, take, I'll take it from that then, that everybody's in agreement that we, we go with this, yeah? Yeah. Uh, thank sorry, you very uh, much. Joe, could I just ask another question of John? If you could just tell us exactly... <laughs> Apologies. Um, the the, the £1,000, it, it sounded as if they were very close to their um, to their target, is that correct? I mean, we... Uh, they are... Uh, hold on, I've, I've just closed that page. Uh, hold on. Uh, so they are requesting £1,000. They have currently secured £87,070. They are yet to secure twenty-seven thousand five hundred pounds. So that's uh, the applications that are outstanding that they put in for. Uh, yeah. So they have already received twenty-two and a half thousand from Cambridgeshire Historic Churches, forty-three and a half from church funds, charities, fundraising, twenty-one and a bit thousand pounds from VAT relief. Uh, they have also got open applications for £20,000 with the National Churches Trust and £7,500 from the John Coates Charitable Trust. OK, good. Thank you. I thought English Heritage might have have a um, uh, opportunity there. It comes to the National Lottery. Um, I think it, they've become very, very specific on these kinds of applications now, I think. so. Um, they have they have had money in the past from English Heritage for repairs to the masonry. Mm. Uh, so that is um, uh, that is support share. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. please. Um, thank you, Chair. Just in in relation to Councillor Dalton's um, uh, Dalton's comments with regards to images and our drive to improve the process, um, are. Uh, for, for projects such as this, would you like us to ask for images? Would this be useful? I, I, I think it would be rather nice. I mean, we don't need masses, but it would be it would be nice. Sometimes uh, an image or a picture paints a thousand words, they say so. Mm, that's right. Thank you very much, Chair. We will make that addition to the um, uh, to the application form. Much uh, next, next up, we have. Found me. Uh, Falmere Recreation Ground and Village Hall uh, and they are requesting a thousand pounds out of uh, a little over four and a half thousand pounds for improvements to community buildings and spaces. 
Uh, it's for refurbishing the changing rooms. I have uh, an exceptionally detailed quote of the work that is to be done. Uh, I've looked through it all. I can go through it with you. It, it all does seem uh, it, it, it's, it's a, uh, a, a local company's uh, quote for works uh, for, for them. Uh, the premises are owned by the Falmer Parish Council and leased to Falmer Recreation Ground and Village Hall, which is a charity. Uh, and uh, they have sent through a copy of the, the, the deed lease uh, agreement um, uh, as well to, 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 to proof that. Thank you. Members? Um, if comment, um, if, if I'm, it's not in, um, it, it's in Councillor Roberts' uh, patch, it, it's in my county patch. I know this is um, uh, the recreation ground and the facilities that they offer there. They have spent a lot of time and time and money. It, seem, it seems like a, a very worthwhile project and, and very much community orientated there. Yeah. I think we've had a few applications in the past uh, from this particular uh, Gammon, we did make comments about not putting it all in one application, if I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, they're doing what we ask. So um, I'm I'm quite happy with it. I think really. Um, yeah. Uh, both Claire Daunton, Claire Delderfield. How about you two guys? Yeah. Um, could I make a comment, please, um, Chairman? I think yeah. one thing that's really important in this is they mentioned making the facilities available available again after COVID. I think we um, we might get more of these kinds of applications because I think we will need to be looking at making um, changing facilities and toilet facilities, making sure that they're really modern and hygienic and up to date as a result of COVID. So I think that's another reason for supporting this now. Right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ellington. I'm very happy with it. No problem in my view. OK, then I think that's a, that's a yes, John, from all of us. Okay, Hales, could I just bring to the attention of the committee that there is actually a grant programme open at the moment, distributing government funds specifically targeted at community leisure providers. Yeah, now, there are six criteria around this, but perhaps it ought to be borne in mind that this applicant may well be eligible for that grant programme, but its uh, window of opportunity is very, very narrow. I believe that applications for that need to be in by the 3rd of August. So, um, Crikey, that is narrow. Um, <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Claire. Uh, Claire, John, could I ask you two guys to liaise and any of the applications we had this morning that may or may not qualify you, you, in your opinions that they should actually perhaps apply to this other fund as well, but whatever, would it be worth just when you send out the email to let them know? Is this um, the discretionary grant funding, um, the government's discretionary grant funding? No. No, I think what Claire is talking about, Claire, you can correct me, uh, Claire Gibbons, is uh, it's either Sport England or or another organisation. Is that right, Claire? No, in fact, it's the grant fund that the district council itself is currently distributing. So that's right. under Peter's auspices. Um, yes. Yes, it's under your auspices, Peter. Um, we, would, we would need to work, look at with the applicant to, to identify whether they were at eligible under those criteria but we ought to alert them that this might be a possibility and look at that together with them okay um, I mean generally generally the funds haven't gone towards um, you know capital items but that's fine let's take that offline and see if they qualify and uh, if so that money could come back into our pot thank you chair so uh, is that is that uh, a, a yes for this it's a yes for this, but I do strongly urge that that government grant is uh, looked at sharpish. I will I will liaise with Claire Gibbons uh, later today and in the interests of uh, expediency, we'll uh, phone the applicant uh, to talk to them uh, ab about the, the grant that, that Claire Gibbons has, has raised as a possibility. Thank you very much indeed. John, I'll, I'll just put in, in the chat, if I may, uh, the link. Um, uh, it, it, just so you can find it more easily. 
Uh, I don't yet see it in the chat. Just, just one sec. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. I see that now. Uh, last, uh, we have Diamond Hampers. And uh, sorry, Diamond Hampers. Uh, they started uh, at the beginning of this year on the first first 2020. They have they they state that they have 500 members. Uh, that they are not a registered charity, but do have a bank account. Uh, they are requesting uh, 300 pounds to purchase more food for the food bank and 200 pounds to carry out essential training and check training and checks. Uh, when I asked them what exactly this meant, uh, they've they've specified that it's DBS checks uh, carried out via the direct gov website at the cost of 23 uh, pounds each. They have uh, confirmed that they've not approached parish councils, and um, uh, when I when when asked which areas they will be supporting with uh, food parcels, uh, they said all villages around Huntingdonshire, and uh, have not been able to uh, specifically define the areas within South Cams that they would be operating in. Uh, however, they are registered on the on the on on on, on the county website. Okay, I have a question. Um, I thought for volunteers DBS checks were free anyway. Um, it's yeah. only if you're paid. Yeah, that's they true. become. So mm -hmm. that would be perhaps something they need to really do check. Um, and the other glaring problem is it just doesn't say South Cams, it has work, it says Huntingdonshire. As much as this might break my heart, because I know there is a need um, and growing need, um, I do think perhaps they might like to look further, uh, closer to home. Perhaps I, I don't know about you guys. What what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think, Chair, we might have to think about this for the autumn, because unfortunately, with the economic situation, we may see more need for this. So. Uh, I think it's right to ask these questions and ask for something closer to home. Uh, I suspect we will get others along this line. Yeah, I agree. It's, um... I, I'm not sure, um, Chairman, whether we should be purchasing food. Um, does that fit our criteria? No, because it's a revenue cost. Yeah. So, I mean, the training um to provide further training i think we could support that but i think like peter we we need to ask some more questions and also um i'd just like to know a little bit more about the group who, who are they and where are they based that I, I if i'm if i'm reading this application right john i think that the, this, this applicant is in need of a lot of help and 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 uh, guidance I mean, uh, it says multiple parishes, but I don't, I don't see that the parishes have contributed either, um, from what I can gather. Um, and, you know. and chair, the chair, could I just comment as well yeah. that, yeah, as part as part of that, I mean, there are some very well established now, community, uh, you know, food bank, uh, food parcel support. support. Uh, networks. So I think we just need to. The question really should be, where are you filling the gaps? Where do you believe gaps are? Yeah. Because many, many, many villages are already covered. Yeah. Um, and and it may be that there are gaps. Uh, I would also agree with Councillor Daunton that it's not really for us to provide food, um, but training and support and 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 I don't know equipment where necessary. So if they want a DBS that's got to be paid for, they've got someone who's on the payroll as well. They're, they're yeah. getting money. So, uh, Councillor Ellison, do you have any comments? I support what Claire and Peter have been saying. I, I do feel that I need to know where they're based. I need to know where they're providing the service. I don't think we should be buying food and I'm not happy about it not being South Cams. So I, it's a no, no from me. Yeah, I think I think really. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, and Councillor Delaford, you, you agree as well, do you? Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I agree. Yeah. Right, okay, then in that case, it, it's a no from us. Um, but with the but with the advice and the guidance, perhaps, John, that you might and the team might be able to offer them and also answers to the questions. And if they can answer those questions, and be more specific about how it affects South Cam, then they're more than welcome to come back and try again. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, that concludes all of the community chest applications. Right. Um, I think, I think uh, as, as John has rightly said, that's it. Uh, members, I think in that case, we'll call it a day on that one, and thank you very much indeed. Um, does anyone have any quick points they need to make before we go? relevant to the, of the committee? No. Nope. Uh, Chair, I would just say the next meeting is Friday 28th of August. Yep, thank you very much. Um, uh, Chair, could I just say that I will be on holiday that week, so I will seek a substitute in good time. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Dalton. Hope it's not Portugal, otherwise we won't see you again <laughs> in the quarantine. Chair, I have a question, here. if that is all right. Yeah, go ahead, John. Thanks. Um, we mentioned with regards to the Bowl Greens, uh, new guidelines with regards to um, zero carbon grants and uh, uh, diesel uh, versus electric uh, lawnmowers. Yeah. Um, uh, as we are currently in the process of uh, renovating the, uh, the the procedures, it would be a good time to sort of get that get that baselined and in. And I was wondering uh, how how you would like that to, to be to be acted. Would you like us to arrange a quick get together on Teams just to have a quick discussion about it? Uh, uh, I, I'd be happy to be involved in that. <laughs> Uh, well, what I would suggest, John and Chair, is uh, also talk to the county uh, yeah. because they've probably already looked at this. Um, I don't know for certain, but I suspect they have uh, because the ownership and uh, schools, obviously, and they may be able to help you. Is that is that OK, John? Are you still um, there, Chair? So, so I, I suppose what I'm asking is if if we have, uh, I, would you would you consider these uh, guidelines, uh, the publishing of these guidelines, to be a delegated officer decision, or is that something that you would like to vote on at, at, at the next meeting of the, the the committee? I think we'd like to see it first, and then okay, if that's okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Think, um, run us an email around, John, when you've got some ideas and thoughts, and then we can come back and then arrange perhaps a quick um, we'll half hour here, if you like, if people have got some time to spare. Thank you very much, Chair. OK, in that case, then, uh, members and officers, and obviously members of the public, and then millions looking at us, um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're now going to conclude this meeting and uh, close down see you on the 28th. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron.